So now on to the dinosaur of the day, Microraptor, which was a request from Guy via Patreon, so thank you. And I hope I am pronouncing that right, but please correct me if I'm wrong. So Microraptor means small thief, and it lived in the Cretaceous, and its fossils were found in Liaoning, China. There are three species, Microraptor jiaoyinus, Microraptor gui, and Microraptor hanqingyi. Some scientists think that they are all one species, which would be Microraptor jaoyanus. There's a synonym for Microraptor too, it's Cryptovolvans, which was another four-winged dinosaur. So Microraptor was named by Xu Xing and others in 2000. Its naming was actually pretty controversial because it was revealed that the first specimen described was actually the tail of a microraptor, but the upper body of Yanornis and a third species that was put together in China and it was smuggled into the U.S. for sale. Yeah, that happens sometimes. You stick a couple fossils together to make it look like a complete fossil. Mm -hmm. So when Xu Xing from Beijing's Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology and Paleoanthropology revealed it was a forgery, Storrs Olson, who's the bird curator at the National Museum of Natural History, Smithsonian, wrote a description of the tale and named it Archiroraptor leoningensis. Later, Xu Xing found the rest of Microraptor to go with the tail, which, again, that part was Microraptor, and officially described it, but with the name Microraptor jaoyanus. Since the name Achiroraptor and Microraptor referred to the same specimen, normally the Microraptor name would have been a junior synonym of Achiroraptor, since it was officially named afterwards. But Achiroraptor was revealed to be fake before it was officially named. Olsen had tried to assign the name Achiroraptor to just the tail part of Microraptor to remove this taint. So Achiroraptor, the tail part, was named as Electotype which is a name from a group of specimens with the same name. But since Achiroraptor wasn't officially named, it was only named in the media, not in the scientific world, this name didn't count, and that's why the name Microraptor prevailed. In December 2015, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement officials said that they were returning a Microraptor fossil to China, so I wonder how many Microraptor fossils made it over here. Yeah, <laughs> hiding in people's secret fossil rooms. <laughs> yeah. So going back to Microraptor's other synonym, Cryptovolans. Cryptovolans poly, specifically, that name means hidden flying, and the species name honors Gregory S. Paul, and it was described in 2002. It was also found in Liaoning, China, and it lived at the same time as Microraptor. The scientists who described Cryptovolans thought it was a bird because it had primary feathers, which were on the arm and leg, but later studies found that it was very similar to Microraptor. It had a longer tail, but it had other features in common. And in 2004, Phil Center and colleagues suggested Cryptovolans poly and Microraptor gui were junior synonyms of Microraptor jaoyanus, and other scientists have supported this. Stephen Cherkas said when describing cryptovolans that Microraptor may have been a better flyer than Archaeopteryx, and that Dromaeosauridae may have been a basal bird group, and that basal dromaeosaurs were small, lived in trees, and could at least glide. Later discoveries of more primitive dromaeosaurs with short forelimbs, though, meant that they couldn't all glide. Over 300 specimens of Microraptor have been found. They were very abundant in their ecosystem. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. They're similar to Synovenator, which is a basal trudontid, probably because they're both primitive members of two groups that are closely related and are close to the split between Dromaeosaurids and trudontids. Microraptor was small and it had four wings. It was crow-sized. An adult Microraptor was 1.4 to 2.7 feet, 42 to 83 centimeters long, and weighed up to 2.2 pounds, or one kilogram. I love that they have four wings, too. I can't think of any other non-insect that has four wings. It's so cool. Yeah, I guess just dinosaurs. In 2012, Benson estimated that Microraptor, though, was 3.9 feet or 1.2 meters long. Microraptor is one of the smallest non-avian dinosaurs that we know of. It's one of the first non-avian dinosaurs found with impressions of feathers and wings, and it shows the evolution between birds and dinosaurs. Its body was covered in feathers with a diamond-shaped fan on the end of the tail, it had long feathers on its arms, tail, and legs. In 2003, Xu Xing described the first Microraptor specimen as having four wings and said it may have been able to glide. There's been debate over whether or not Microraptor could also fly. It's one of the few dinosaurs known to have had long flight feathers on its legs as well as its wings. Its primary feathers were on the hand and foot and secondary feathers on the arm and legs. 
In 1915, William Beebe said that birds may have had four wings at some point. So he kind of predicted this find. At first, scientists thought that Microraptor kept its arms and legs level when flying, or they overlapped each other. But in 2005, Sankar Chatterjee said that this was not possible, and instead the legs were on a different level, but parallel to the arms, so that from the front it looked like it had two pairs of wings. He also said in 2005 that in order to glide, Microraptor launched from a perch, swooped down into a U-shaped curve, and then lifted again, landing on another tree. Using computer algorithms, he found that Microraptor would have been able to fly at least on occasion in addition to gliding. That's cool. He called this the biplane method, but not all scientists agreed with this method. <laughs> the biplane method? <laughs> yes. That's funny. So Microraptor may have had multiple ways of gliding or flying. It's unclear whether Microraptor held its legs directly under its body or if its legs were splayed to the side when in the air. Knowing this would help, scientists understand how it flew or glided, but often its hips and upper leg fossils are found crushed, so it's hard to say. In 2013, researchers from the University of Southampton created a Microraptor model to experiment positions it held inside a wind tunnel. They found it worked best, quote, when the limbs were in the straight-down posture and the tail operated as a lift-generating structure. So for the wind tunnel study, they made this poseable scale model of Microraptor out of feathers from ducks and <laughs> pigeons. They tested Microraptor with sprawling limbs, limbs projecting downwards, and without hind limbs. From the Scientific American blog post that described the experiment in 2013, quote, The tail operated as a lift-generating structure, meaning that Microraptor can accurately be described as a five-winged flyer, <laughs> not just a four-winged one. Why not? <laughs> yes. They found it could glide easily, but flying would have been difficult. There would have been too much drag. It did have five wings. <laughs> <laughs> yes. According to the post, quote, it was well able to glide no matter what the feather or wing configuration. In fact, we concluded that all Microraptor needed in order to glide effectively was a flat wing surface. Feather asymmetry, anatomy, and configuration didn't make that much difference. This is according to Dyke et al. in 2013. A discovery which supports the view that the evolution of theropod wing and feather anatomy did not occur within an aerodynamic context, end quote. So, Microraptor probably sometimes glided, but it did not specialize in it. Not all scientists think that Microraptor could have flown or glided. Some studies found its shoulder socket face downward and backward, which meant it couldn't raise its arm vertically and flap. And some scientists said that the shoulder girdle is curved, so the shoulder joint is high on the back, allowing Microraptor to raise its arms vertically. The long wing feathers on Microraptor's arms would also have made it hard for Microraptor to run or move on the ground because they would have dragged on the ground. And its feathers would have dragged when its arms were in a neutral position, so Microraptor could not use its clawed forelimbs to go after prey or move objects without damaging its wings. Mm. It could not take off from the ground either since it would have damaged the flight feathers on its feet. Some scientists think the feathers on its feet would have made it difficult for Microraptor to run, and instead maybe it lived in trees and glided. That would make a lot of sense. Yeah. Research in 2012 found that Microraptor had great control over its hind wings. This helped increase, quote, its rate of turn by 33 to 50 percent compared to using only the front wings, end quote. This is according to Michael Habib from the University of Southern California, who co-presented research over Microraptor's movement at the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology back in 2012. According to Justin Hall, a collaborator of the study, quote, No one's going to argue that this was the fastest animal in the ecosystem. This was an animal about the size of a crow living among predatory dinosaurs at a time when the largest animal in the air had a 15-foot, 4.6-meter wingspan. <laughs> so a 33% increase in turning speed could have meant the difference between life and death, end quote. It's like a little nimble bird rather than a big predatory bird. Yes. So again, its hind wings may have created drag, which would have made it harder to fly or glide. Quote, if you were trying to use those blocky hind wings to glide, they would be very poor at that. Uh, this is from Habib. But if you care more about a very rapid, powerful motion, such as turning, than you do about sustained motion, being draggy is fine. End quote. Going tree to tree sounds like a good option. Yeah. Microraptor's tail feathers, which were like a fan, would help correct the hind wings pitch so that it would not nosedive in the air. It's unclear if Microraptor was arboreal or terrestrial, but it spent at least some time in trees. Using its hind wings to increase its turning speed may give some insight into modern birds that hunt, like eagles. Paul said, quote, why do eagles stick out their legs when they fly? It looks weird, right? 
Well, they have a lot of feathers on those legs, so they're producing a lot of drag. It leads to the implication that they're doing it intentionally for control. End quote. Not enough fossilized feathers have been found to prove how dinosaurs evolved into birds, but Microraptor helps to fill a gap. Habib said, quote, a combination of pitch control by the tail, roll generation by the hind wings, and multi-purpose control by the main wings would have made Microraptor a highly maneuverable animal. But not all scientists are convinced of this study. Some say that it only looks at how a hind limb affects an animal that glides, not animals that flap their wings, and gliding is not necessarily part of the evolution of flight. That's true. Yeah, so there's debate over the evolution of flight. Was it from the ground up? Did fast runners become airborne or tree down? Did arboreal animals that could glide turn into flyers? There's a lot of comparison between Microraptor and Archaeopteryx. Archaeopteryx only had one set of wings on its front limbs. Microraptor was the first to have wings on its front and rear limbs. Microraptor lived 20 to 25 million years after Archaeopteryx, which shows that flight started evolving more than once in the Mesozoic era, though only one lineage is still around. Yeah, you also had pterodactyls, too. Yeah. Could be a whole other one. That's true. Because of long leg feathers found on Microraptor as well as other raptors in Archaeopteryx, birds may have evolved from having four wings to having two front wings. Because Microraptor is in the same family as Velociraptor and Deinonychus, which lived later, they're dromaeosaurs, these raptors were probably secondarily flightless, and that means that they evolved from flying ancestors. Not everyone believes this, though, and some think Microraptor is distantly related to other raptors. Microraptor had short, downy tail feathers. It had some dark and light-colored feathers. Some that may have been iridescent black, like a crow's. So, very crow-like, this Microraptor. <laughs> In 2012, Chuang Guo Li and a team analyzed Microraptor and figured out what color it was. They examined melanosomes and compared them to modern birds, and they found it was consistent with birds with black, iridescent colors, a glossy coat, which may have been used for communicating or for display. Gotta love those melanosomes. Mm hmm. And they found that Microraptor was predominantly iridescent feathers. Interesting. One study found that Microraptor may have flashed its tail feathers like a peacock. This tail was probably used for courtship and probably not very helpful for flight, not very aerodynamic. Eh, maybe for lift, though. There is a bird, a modern bird, that has that really long tail, too, that it flaps around and the males have it so long that they can barely fly because hmm. they have a tail kind of like what they're describing for Microraptor. Sounds like there's a lot of debate, though, over how Microraptor moved. Yeah, seriously. So Microraptor may have eaten lizards. In 2010, scientists found preserved gut contents in a Microraptor gallianus of mammal bones, a possible skull, limb, and a whole foot. Uh-oh. In 2011, scientists officially described a microraptor with bird bones in its abdomen, which seems to show it swallowed a whole bird, one Oof. that perched in trees based on its foot. That means it's probably spent some time in trees. Yeah. In 2013, scientists described fish scales found in the abdomen of a microraptor, which shows it was an opportunistic feeder and ate prey in arboreal and aquatic habitats. Well, that'd be hard to catch a fish if all you could do was glide. Yeah, you gotta that's true. go down towards the water and then somehow not accidentally land in the water. I guess maybe it's possible if you do that U-shaped thing they were talking about. Yeah, risky. Yeah, if it's a tasty fish. Yeah. Well, so it's unclear if Microraptor scavenged or caught fish, so that could be it too. Maybe it's found a fish. <laughs> Just a fish hanging out on the land. Yeah. <laughs> it. I mean, it might have swooped down, as you said, but scientists aren't sure. Yeah. It did have teeth that was probably good for catching fish. It had small teeth with a forward angle like a crocodile's that were serrated on one edge so the fish would not be ripped apart while trying to get away. Microraptor also has a scleral ring in its eyes that made scientists think it hunted at night, but if that's the case, it's not clear why it had glossy iridescent feathers. Yeah, I don't know about the leap to iridescent feathers because from what I remember with melanosomes, you could only really tell if it was black or red. Hmm. The iridescent thing is a little... Mm. Mm. Yeah, hard to say. Yeah. So Microraptor lived in a forested freshwater lake habitat, and it could climb, and apparently it ate some fish. And that is <laughs> what we know. It's a dromaeosaurid, and dromaeosaurids are carnivorous theropods closely phylogenetically related to aves, which is a clad that includes birds. They probably originated before the late Jurassic, but fossil records so far is only of the Cretaceous. They lived all over the world, but there's not that many fossils. Dromaeosaurids from the late Cretaceous in North America have a poor fossil record. They're mostly known from isolated teeth. 
And in North America, only eight species are named, and they're all pretty much based on incomplete fossil remains. Not all, but a lot. They're often referred to as raptors because of Jurassic Park. And that book that Michael Crichton was reading when he wrote Jurassic Park, I forget what it was called. There was a book, I think he was basically saying maybe there was just one genus and it included Velociraptor and Deinonychus and stuff, and maybe they were like the same. And that's partly why they look the way they do in Jurassic Park. Yeah, I remember that story, but I don't remember the name of the book. Yeah. Dromaeosaurids had S-curved necks, long arms, and large hands with large claws. The feet had a recurved claw on the second toe, known as a sickle claw, and this claw may have been used for slashing, climbing, or even clawing through insect nests. At least some dromaeosaurids uh, may have lived in groups. Most, if not all, had feathers. They were bipedal, but they held their second toe off the ground when walking, and they had long tails that may have been used to help counterbalance when running or in the air. They're generally small to medium-sized, though Utah raptor was large. Some could fly or glide, like Chengyu raptor Yangai, and they were very bird-like in both behavior and the fact that they had feathers. Yeah, they're one of the most popular groups of dinosaurs for sure. After well, tyrannosaurs. Yeah. A lot of people just think of them as velociraptors, but <laughs> <laughs> there's a whole group of them. 